Thank you, Greg. Yeah. I have some great stories about Bill Sheriff, I'll tell you later, Chris. He and I go back to undergrad together. But, um, the, uh, as you mentioned, 200 mineral property assets worldwide, um, over 160 royalties covering 5 million acres of mineral property that we've amassed through execution of our business models over the course of the last 21 years. And, and we are focused on two of your three favorite metals, Greg. So copper and gold are, are, we don't have any uranium exposure at this time, although uh, EMX, I'll point out that EMX was a seed shareholder in a, in a, a Bill Sheriff related company, Energy Metals Corporation, and uh, many years ago. Uh, and uh, um, you know, that was a, a super successful event that catalyzed uh, EMX in its early days with monies that were then reinvested into helping to build this portfolio. So there's a combined history here. The, um, uh, today, what I want to do is, is, you know, I could talk uh, extensively about these 160 royalties, about the over 100 kilometers of drill holes that are paid for entirely by our partners to advance these assets, and the discovery optionality that is thus embedded in that portfolio as a result of that, which is why you want to own royalties, right? We're all happy about the cash flow today, but why we really want to own royalties is because we want to be exposed to that discovery optionality, which is going to take that cash flow ever higher into the future as mines are built on our properties at no cost to the royalty holder. And this is what makes owning royalties very special. So I could go on and on about that, but what I really want to do today is focus on our two key assets, which are both generational copper assets. One's copper gold and one is copper molybdenum, as they represent distinct opportunities within uh, this portfolio that are obvious and are not even close to fully recognized in our stock price. Uh, there's a distinct valuation gap, and I want to explain that valuation gap and why that presents an opportunity to you and me both. And so first, let's go in and talk about Timuk, uh, at, also known as the Chukuru Peki mine in the Timuk Magmatic Complex. We came into Serbia, helped them rewrite their mining law, became the first company to be granted exploration licenses in uh, Serbia after the Balkan Wars. We advanced those assets, sold them for a combination of cashiers and royalties. That's what we do. Uh, subsequently, there was a huge discovery made, and I was able to foresee that and buy a royalty adjacent to the royalties that we grew organically, and thus put together this portfolio of royalties within the Timok district, which constitute 123 square kilometers. There is a 0.3625% royalty on the green ones that you see there, which includes the, the, uh, one of the largest copper gold development projects and the largest copper gold deposit ever found in the history of Europe um, on that license. And we'll talk about some detail on that here in a minute. That is in production. It's already paid over $7 million to us. And then we also have on the magenta license, uh, that is a royalty that we grew organically, a 2% royalty on gold and silver and 1% on all other metals. And I want to point out, uh, there has been some um, misunderstandings about these royalties uh, out in, in, uh, on the blogs and whatnot. These royalties are in perpetuity, and they're on all minerals produced from all those licenses, period. And uh, there was a reason why some unscrupulous people were saying that some of the royalties only applied to certain zones. That is entirely incorrect. And these royalty statements are filed on CDAR. You can read them yourself. Let's make sure that's very clear because we, we're commonly asked those questions. So let's go in. I want to look at the geometry of the deposit. And I'll point out that previously there was one upper zone and then one big lower zone. Now you can see the outline of the two upper zones. That has now been announced by Zijin, the operator. And it's on their website. And we'll talk a bit about that. So this is uh, back from the 2018 block model that was done by Nevsun. And you can see the, uh, one of the upper zones there with its underground development. And then you can see the block model associated with the lower zone. And you can see the boundary with the blue license to the left that is 2% on precious metals and 1% on everything else. And then to the right, it's 0.3625. It's the one on the right that is currently in production and currently has resources and reserves. That's already paid us $7.6 million to date. Is currently paying about $3.8 million per annum while they're mining in the upper zone. When they get to the lower zone, which, way, which they will do with block cave technology, 
um, that royalty will double in output uh, on a pounds and ounces basis. But really importantly here as an EMX shareholder, you need to note that the deposit at its thickest and highest grade portion is completely open laterally and at depth and, and open towards that 2%, 1% boundary. So this could go from a royalty that has an NPV zero, uh, i.e. a ca total com cumulative cash flow at no discount rate that exceeds a half a billion dollars, which is what it is today. It can cross the line and easily become a plus billion dollar long-term payer. I believe this royalty portfolio in, team, in the Teamwork District over the life of it, over the course of the next 50 years, uh, will, will exceed a billion dollars. It's entirely likely. Um, and that's without taking into account where Greg thinks the price of copper is going. So that would only add fuel to the fire. So it's very important that we understand that this immediate discovery optionality exists. And if we look at this image, which is from the Zijin website, and on that website they list their current resources, which are not 43101 compliant, so I can't, I can't tell you what they are. Um, but they're great numbers and they're on their website and the reference for that is right there so you can see that and click on and go to it. And you can see that lower zone and the two upper zones now, both of which have underground development and our guys have been underground at both of the upper zones uh, and is paying us nicely each quarter. And the lower zone, you can see there's no drill data at all uh, and it's at its thickest and highest grade portion is completely open-ended laterally and at depth. So this is a key asset. Our stock is undervalued just on this one asset, let alone the other 160 royalties that we have in the world. So the next one that is a generational asset is the big copper molybdenum mine in Chile called Casarones that is now operated by the 51% owner Lundin Mining Corporation. Uh, Lundin has to be one of the best counterparties to have in the mining business. And uh, right now, the uh, proven and probable reserves here are 886 million tons. This has multi-decade mine life. In 2023, this royalty paid $10.7 million to us. We believe that these numbers are only going to continue to increase. And I would like to point out that Lundin specifically believes that as well. They have told their investors that they intend to increase production here by 27% over the course of the next two to three years. And they have aggressive exploration program planned. Um, they're investing nearly $15 million and planning to drill 13 kilometers of drill holes into their properties here. And I'd like to point out that our royalty footprint is that dark yellow line covers a significant portion of the entire district extending from the world-class Los Jalados district up through Casarones. When Lundin listed the highest priority targets on their ground, the first was high-grade breccia deposits that they have found within the Casarones pit and at depth. And that was our number one target, obviously squarely in the middle of our royalty footprint. Then the Angelica deposit, which is an oxide copper deposit that they have found and now realize that there is sulfide protoors at depth and they will be drilling that as their second priority. This is fantastic news for us as royalty holders here. Our effective royalty now was announced yesterday has been increased to 0.8306%. Uh, we're delighted to, to uh, own this royalty. We bought this as a syndicate with Franco Nevada. Yeah, so I would argue that we're undervalued for either one of these assets, let alone having them, having them both, both multi-decade mine lines. So in addition to that, we have other paying royalties, Getic Tepe, 10%, uh, this is paying um, uh, nicely, you know, five plus million dollars a year, plus some uh, stage gate payments. Leeville has been on an uptick lately as, uh, as Barrick, as part of the Nevada Gold Mines joint venture, has uh, started mining from the Four Corners zone, uh, and this royalty is, is kicking in nicely. Last year paid over three million USD to us. Um, Balia has been slow to advance. Uh, I have overestimated in the past what Balia would do. Uh, they continue to have some metallurgical problems on the property, but long term it's gonna be a great producer. It's paying right at about a million dollars a year right now. Um, and so how it's that all worked out from a financial standpoint is, you know, if you've been following me for years, I've said this is gonna become a cash cow, and I'm happy to say it has. 
And we announced yesterday record revenues coming into the company in 23 of over 37 million US dollars, thanks to these things coming to fruition. Um, and I'm particularly proud of the fact that, that in many cases here, the monies that we have spent to achieve these results has been minimal. Uh, the Timuk project and all the Timuk royalties we have in Serbia combined cost 200,000 Canadian dollars. It's already paid 7.6 million and will pay, in my view, well, from the current reserves, the MPV zero is a half a billion. I believe it will pay over a billion in actuality with exploration upside. And that's not bloviating. That's just looking straight at what's in the ground. Um, and, and that's return on capital. And that speaks to the power of our business model. So I encourage you to go through, look at these. The, the slide right here just shows nine months through 23. Uh, our our uh, um, press release just came out yesterday, so this, this slide's not updated for the full year. Uh, and it shows that we're receiving a nice diversified income source from copper and gold, as well as uh, lead, zinc, silver, and molybdenum. Yeah, this is another way to illustrate that. You can see the monies that have come into us from Getic Tepe, Casarones, Leeville. Uh, Leeville has paid uh, $22 million since we've owned that royalty. It's on, been on a nice uptick of recent, as I mentioned. And I'll point out that part and parcel to our business model, where we sell assets in exchange for cash payments, share payments, and royalties as part of our organic royalty generation, we have a lot of stage gate payments coming into the company or property agreement payments. Uh, and that's been a nice income source for us throughout our history. Over the last year, that constitutes 18% of the total money coming in the door. That used to be a much higher number, but now that the production royalties are kicking in, that's a lesser number, but still a salient amount of money that allows us to continue to build this portfolio in, uh, inexpensively as we move forward. So I'm, I'm proud to have Franco Nevada on the list. We're the only royalty company where Franco has made an equity placement. We also have a, uh, a royalty financing joint venture with them. Um, and uh, some other people that I have a lot of respect for on the list here. I'd like to point out that Extract Capital recently has bought a lot of our stock. That's Darren Milmeister. Uh, we have a lot of respect for him. He's asked a lot of uh, uh, detailed questions of us for years. And he is fully in right now. Um, happy to have them. Newmont, my alma mater, owns 4.2%. Paul Stevens, who's an aficionado of the royalty business, has bought a lot of stock out of the open market. Um, and uh, uh, he's, uh, if you include his, the stock that he owns personally as well as the, in his managed funds, um, that's close to 9%. Adrian Day and Euro Pacific, which is managed by Adrian Day, is at 4.5% now. Only 112 million shares issued and outstanding. Those 3.8 million warrants are held by Barrick, excuse me, are held by Franco Nevada, uh, giving us 125 million fully diluted. Uh, and our cash position is strong with cash flow being strong. I'll point out that the debt here is at the end of the last quarter was $44 million US. It is now 34 as we just recently announced we paid down 10 million of that debt. That debt currently is at a 7% coupon rate um, I do believe that that coupon rate will go up the next time we restructure that debt, uh, and that's something that we're working on. I'm confident that we'll have that accomplished within the next few months. I mentioned the, the joint venture with Franco. We're really pleased to work with them. I had the opportunity to work with them while I was at Newmont Mining Corporation, and it was really um, some of Pierre Lassant's comments when I was a young geologist that gave me the, the passion to go out and do this. Thanks very much for your time.